Okay, so in this lecture, I'm going to describe for you the notion of a subspace, and we'll look at some some simple consequences of you know the, the definition of a subspace. Okay, so you have a vector space V, and you know you consider some subset of this vector space. So as you know, V is a set of vectors. If you consider some you know subset of this vectors. Uh, if it so happens that the subset itself is a vector space, then you say that that subset is a subspace of of V, right? So you have a sub subset S of vectors, subset of V, and which satisfies all the requirements of you know of a vector space by itself, and then that would be a subspace. So it turns out that you need to check only for two requirements, right? If you if there is closure under vector addition and closure under scalar multiplication then automatically this subset is going to be um, a subspace right so the presence of the null vector and the additive inverse for every vector space in a subspace actually follows from the above definition itself right so how does this happen right so if you have if you have a vector uh, you know sub, suppose there is a vector v which is an element of your subspace then uh, closure under scalar multiplication means minus v also must be part of this and closure under uh, scale, uh, vector addition means v minus v must also be part of this uh, space right so if v and minus v and minus v are both part of this space so the additive inverse exists in this part of the same space the sum of these two v minus v must also be part of this which is the null vector so so the presence of the null vector and the additive inverse are guaranteed simply because s is a subset of v and these properties hold for the bigger space it automatically implies that you know just you have to just check for vector addition closure under vector addition and closure under scalar multiplication and you're done right let's look at a few examples so if you look at uh, think of the set of three dimensional real vectors as your vector space now the set of vectors lying in the xy plane it will constitute a subspace and it's a two dimensional space right you can check that you know the set of vectors the xy plane itself is a vector space as we have seen before right and so and clearly the the xy plane is a subset of the three dimensional space and therefore it's a subspace the set of all vectors lying in any plane in general constitutes a two dimensional subspace you do it does not have to be in the xy plane it could be any plane right again you can see that you know you can think of any two vectors in that space and that will form a basis and that's going to be a vector space by itself and it, it's a subspace of the, the set of three dimensional vectors also the set of all vectors parallel to a given straight line maybe for example the x-axis they all form a one dimensional space and that too is a subspace okay so let's look at one consequence of the above definition the set of all linear combinations of any subset of vector so you, you have a, an overall space vector space you consider some subset of vectors and you you make a set which is you know the com the span of this uh, this subset basically the set of all linear combination of any sub sub subset of vectors is a subspace right right so let's work this out for a, a finite set of vectors right you can also have a an infinite you know set uh, a subset which is made up of an infinite set of vectors we can extend this uh, you know to this case uh, right after the result for you know using finite set of vectors let's say you have a finite set of vectors xi i equal to 1 2 all the way up to n now if you take a linear combination of all these vectors right that's the set that is clearly an infinite set right you're working with a uh, you know the span of this uh, set of vectors will be a space now the question is is this um, is this a subspace right so the argument is the following so any vector in this space is going to be of this form right by definition which is alpha i times xi linear combination of these vectors xi now uh, 
So clearly, if you add any two vectors of this form, the resulting vector will also be of the same form. You will have some, in, in place of alpha i, you will have some alpha i plus beta i, if you have taken another vector of the same kind. So then alpha i plus beta i, the set of coefficients is also another set of coefficients. So therefore, that is also a vector of the same form. So it must lie in the same space. So closure under addition holds and also closure under scalar multiplication also holds. If you multiply throughout with some scalar, the resulting vector also has the same form. So it must, must also be part of the space. Therefore, it's evident th that we have verified closure under vector addition and scalar multiplication. And this is evidently a subset of the overall space. Therefore, this itself is a subspace, right? Now, I mean, if you had a an infinite, you know, subset of vectors, then, uh, you know, you can, you can construct, you know, you can come up with the idea of a basis. There will be a basis which will have a finite number of vectors, right? We are working with, um, you know, finite dimensional spaces. So if you have, if you consider a subset of your overall space, that the span of, you know, the, the vectors you have considered in this subset will also be representable in terms of a finite number of basis vectors. And when you work with that and use the same type of argument, you can show that indeed uh, the set of all linear combinations of any subset of vectors is a subspace of V, right? And so finally, we will see that if there is a subspace V1 of a finite dimensional vector space V, if the dimension of V1 and V2 are the same, then V1 is equal to V, right? So if the dimension of V1 is N, right? It's a finite dimensional uh, space. So n, we will be able to find a basis of n linearly independent vectors so that span v1. But the dimension of v is also n and we have the result that any n vectors which are linearly independent will, uh, will, will, be, will form a basis for v. So the basis we have formed for v1 it's, is in fact a basis for v itself. So the span of since the span of this, so the span of this uh, basis that we had is in fact the whole space V itself. Therefore, the span of, uh, you know, the V1 is equal to V because we have seen that uh, the span of this basis will give you V1, but the span of this basis is also going to give you V and the span of, it's the, same, the span of the same basis. So you have V1 is equal to V, right? It's not something very surprising, I guess, but you know, if you look at the chain of arguments, it shows you how, you know, using, uh, you know, the basic properties in a very clean and systematic way, we are able to obtain all these results, right? In a uh, more or less rigorous way, right? So although that's not the uh, emphasis of this course, but by and large, many of the results that we have covered, we have also be, uh, tried to be as rigorous as possible without making it, you know, uh, without letting it go out of hand in some sense, right? That's not the, you know, the the emphasis of course of this course is not, uh, you know, rigor, but when possible, why not also be as rigorous as possible? Okay, so that's all for this lecture. Thank you.